It is my great honor and pleasure to introduce Gregor Wigberg from OneConsult AG. Actually, he's my boss, so please be nice to him, or I will have a problem. <laughs> and he will talk about the very, very important topic of not forgetting the human and the human side of it on both our side and customer side. Exactly. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. So thank you for coming. Um, I had to, uh, to do something different. I cannot talk about AI uh, if everyone is talking about AI, so I'm talking about the human side. And the whole thing started with the ransomware case at NZZ, or rather CH Media, but let's not talk about that. And uh, I'm not sure if you read the article uh, that was written about the case and was published in the NZZ. And I w if you didn't, I r highly recommend you, uh, to read it because there is a very nice paragraph, the paragraph that basically motivated me to even talk about this whole topic, about the human side, because um, we were part of the incident response team that helped NZZ basically respond and recover from the ransomware attack. And it hit me quite hard, surprisingly hard, uh, to read about this IT worker with a three-month-old daughter at home uh, who, did, uh, who didn't see his father. Um, he was not there to help also his uh, wife uh, with the child. And it hit me hard because I was sure that if we knew about it, if we knew that there is such a situation, we could have done something about it. In most incident cases, if there is one person more or less, it's not that impactful, and especially we can make sure that he gets home and can have dinner with his wife and his child. So starting from this, I realized that most of the ransom, uh, yeah, well, ransomware cases in our case, but most of the incident and crisis plans, incident management systems, and so on, don't really take the human side into account. Although humans are responding, and are affected by ransomware attacks, by other kinds of cyber incidents. And it really got me thinking, so why am I even thinking about it? Um, I lead the OCE in CSERT, the One Consult International Computer Security Incident Response Team. Um, if you want to know more, we are here at the conference, uh, have a chat with us. The most important thing is, and as you see again on the picture, it's a team of humans who respond to cyber incidents, cyber attacks, mostly ransomware nowadays still. Um, much harder cases are usually um, business email compromises and phishing, to be honest. Ransomware is a bit boring nowadays for us. And the interesting part is, again, because the human side is quite hard to address and resolve. And I want to really motivate you to look first inside into your organization, into your teams, into your company, whatever you are responsible for, for the sphere that's your scope, your topic. And I want to start with the, questions, uh, the question, why are you even responding to an incident? This is something that I started about a year ago to ask my customers, which is a bit of an asshole move, to be honest, is to ask them in the very first call, why should we even try to resolve it? Why do we should even try to recover it? Isn't it easier to, to just shut down the organization and start anew? And you would be quite surprised how many organizations have no answer to this question, which makes me scary, which scares me. It doesn't make me scary, but it scares me. And the reason being quite easy if you do not know why you even should exist. How do you know what to recover first? What's your priority? And how do you motivate people to work basically 24-7? If there is no mission, if there is no North Star, if there is basically, well, I'm paid to do it, those people won't give their best, and they won't look further than what they have to do. So they won't look left and right and think with you and resolve the issue. And I really employ you to think about those questions in the context of incident response, in the context of crisis management, because you need those answers to base your decisions on. And all the organizations that have a hard time answering those questions are those that take multiple weeks longer than other organizations to resolve and respond. 
So also ask yourself, what are you even trying to accomplish or prevent? And those are not easy questions. It's like having an inventory of all your data. Well, all your systems would be even hard enough already. So the most common argument, of course, is, yeah, well, we need to stay operational. Our goal is to exist. I'm not sure how you feel about it. I'm not, I, I mean, is that really the reason for you just to exist as an organization, as a company, as a public entity? And I would employ you again to think about harder, and let me make this a bit easier to read for me, <coughs> to really think about why do you want um, to exist? Why do you want to recover? Why do you want to respond? And then, <laughs> ideally, you have an incident response plan and you write it there. Because most incident response plans, what, what is their content? Well, who I have to call? What's the general process? Although we all know what the general process is. Identify, um, contain, and then recover. And we focus primarily on the technical side of the whole thing, on the procedural side, and we forget who is doing the work. And in, I might be quite naive, um, to be honest. Um, in my opinion, uh, organizations should only exist if they have a purpose. And the purpose uh, comes from people. And if your organization doesn't come from people, there's no reason for you to exist. It's a bit of a harsh statement, I know. But there is a reason the organization in the end exists. And for me, it must start with people. Otherwise, what's your goal? What are you doing with your life in the end? And you have to know this as a, custom, uh, as a company and as a customer of ours. There is a human side to your business. And if we say there is a human side to your business, there is also a human impact if you have an incident, if you have a ransomware attack, if you have a crisis. And it's quite easy for the people responsible to respond and recover to focus on the technical side, to do the technical things. Those are the easy ones. Those are the easy questions. OK, our active directory is compromised. Well, it's clear we have to rebuild it. Easy. Our networking environment is compromised. We don't know what or, and who is in there. Well, OK, let's build a new one where we are pretty sure there is no one inside. Those are the easy questions. They are not easy to implement, of course, it's, as every IT project it takes a lot of time. But it's much harder to really think about what's the impact to my employees, what's the impact to my customers. Did I address it enough? And I'm not sure if you really have realized that in those pictures are humans. This whole production line makes no reason without the humans. It doesn't even work without the humans. So we have to make sure that we take those into account. And your employees are quite scared in the case of a major attack. Let's take ransomware. We all know how ransomware looks. Or I hope you didn't ever experience it, but you at least saw other companies experience it. And in such a case, those people here, they are the last ones to be informed what's really happening. What does it mean to them? And they are basically not knowing what's happening around them. It's in it's happening to them, not because they want it, but because it's someone somewhere did something. They don't know what it means to their data, if they're even thinking about their data. They don't know if they get their salary, if the company will exist tomorrow. Do I have a job tomorrow? Why am I sent home for paid leave, in Switzerland at least? In other countries, you can just send people home without uh, payment. And those questions really nag at those people. And if you do not talk to them, if you do not explain what's happening, if you do not try to help them, this will lead to a lot of not really tangible, but very harsh um, impacts. So for instance, uh, those people lose trust into their employer. And now you can imagine if you're a team leader, for instance, what that means to your organization, if your employees lose trust to your organization. They might even start talking to each other, to the public, to the press. And because they don't really know what's happening, they will tell a story. Not your story, not very likely not the real story, but some story. And now you have to handle this too. 
make sure you really take time to explain to your employees what's happening, what is going on, and what's the impact to, to them, how, what do they have to learn from it, what do they have to do in such a case. So for instance, if all your HR data is potentially stolen, do your employees need to think about identity theft and, and protect themselves? What does it mean to protect themselves from identity theft? Those are quite complicated, not easy to answer questions for your employees and for you if you are responsible to do it. But if you have multiple hundred of employees asking the very same question and everyone gets another answer, you have a problem at your hands. And if you think about also your customers, the outside world, make sure you really take the time to explain them what it means to them what's happening to you. Yeah, of, of course the attacker was a nation state. Of course it was an APT because everyone is nowadays an APT. Of course it was very targeted, very advanced, and you had no chance at all to do anything about it. It just happens. Those are very nice paragraphs you write in your press release and you write into your letters to your customers, to your partners, to your uh, employees even. But what does it mean now to me? You basically just inform everyone, hey, yeah, we got hit by an attack, but you don't explain what happened, what they can do to protect themselves, what they can do to prevent that the same will happen to them. And yes, I know if you are a legal advisor, if you are responsible for communication, you do not want to talk about this. But those steps help you to become more trustworthy. Your partners will be very happy that you try to protect them, and they will more likely not go to courts because of the attack. Because the worst thing that could happen is that you are the reason why someone else got attacked successfully. Be it because of a business email compromise, because all the email, emails were stolen in your environment, be it because you share an Active Directory environment. Again, um, if we talk about the NZZ case, for instance, I mean, in the end, CH Media was hacked. CH Media was on the ransomware group's site, but everyone was talking about NZZ. Every action that the other company that basically got hit took was reflected on NZZ, although they didn't go to court against different publications. So be sure you communicate, communicate, communicate. And I always tell, especially upper management, to write down in their management systems that they will, they should use every idle minute, every idle second to talk to people, to talk to customers, to talk to the public. Use every free minute, and they have a lot of them, of those minutes, especially in the upper management, because still, nowadays, even I've talked about it the last three years, it's an IT problem, of course. Why should a lawyer be involved? Who knows? There's no GDPR and so on. Um, so they have the time to communicate, and they should, and they must. The same, and I've mentioned it before, who is responding to incident cases? Well, again, your employees, your partners. And you have to make sure they are enabled to do so. Some of you might have heard me talk about this topic a few years ago, and then again, and again, and today I will talk about it again. You have to make sure that your employees have something to drink, they have something to eat, and they take breaks. And you have to make sure that someone is responsible for that. Otherwise, they will be basically scared, think that they have to give their best, which is great, but this will reduce their efficiency over time quite substantially, because in the first day it's easy to be awake 24 hours. The second day, the third day, the fourth day, it gets quite hard. So you are responsible in the end to have someone who is responsible to make sure that those people get the rest. Otherwise, you lose quite a lot of efficiency, which in, in turn means you are longer not operational and you pay my company much more money because we, we are ready, we are sitting there, we are invoicing you for each hour, we are engaged with you. This is, it's a German version, um, something that you, 
I'm still seeing that it's not really addressing any response plan in any crisis management plan, is to make sure that you know who is working when, who is taking a break when, who is sleeping at which hour. It's standard shift work, but you have to plan it. You cannot just expect that shift work will just happen magically. And your employees are very focused on the technical side, on doing the stuff that you give them as tasks. And if you, if you don't take the responsibility to make sure that they take the necessary breaks, you're basically losing a lot of time and a lot of energy. And then I would like to ask you, what emotions did the NZZ quote evoke in you? Were you fine reading that? Do you want to read the same for an employee you know? Do you want to read it about yourself? You also have your own life. You're not just working, I hope. You have your own life, you have your own family. And if we have an incident, it takes a lot of time from your private life. And you should be quite motivated, I hope, to make sure that the pri you have the time for your private life, you have the time to relax, you have time to see your kids. And this is something you have to prepare beforehand. This is something you have to write down now in your incident response plans, into your crisis plans. You have to train this with your tabletop exercise and so on. You know what you should do. Just make sure that you don't forget that you are talking about and invoking and using humans. And those humans are not robots. They are not AI, LLMs and so on. They don't run just on electricity and some circuits. They have also emotions. Now, it's important to think about not only inwards, uh, what does it mean for your employees, for your organization, but it's also important to look outwards. And one example that also somewhat haunts me, um, we were not involved, it, I was not affected personally in any way, but I was quite interested in reading about this case. Um, this is a case where um, Alpha V, a ransomware group, a threat actor, ransomed a healthcare provider. All the standard things, they stole data, they encrypted everything, they ransomed the organization and to increase pressure to get them to pay, they started to publish data that they stole. And most organization, generally speaking, of course, no one in this, in this room decides that their data, the data that they have, if it gets, public, uh, gets pub made public, well, it's not great, but it's not that important. Most organizations, even if they have intellectual property rights and so on, de uh, define in their incident response plans that it's not great. We don't want to make it public ourselves. But if a threat actor comes by, steals all the data and publishes it, it's not that big of a deal. Which is, from a purely business standpoint for the organization, true. I would even sign that statement for most organizations. But it takes not into account the impact on your employees, on the humans that are affected by it. What does it mean if my passport copy is published? What does it mean if my HR record with all my health problems are published? What if my insurer gets ransomware and those records get published? What does it mean to those people? And most organizations, because it's again a hard question to answer, basically ignore it and can hide behind the decision, hey, well, from a business standpoint, it's no impact. But you have a responsibility for some of your customers, at least morally. And you should take a hard look at the data you really have, especially in the classical places, be it HR, be it finance, be it if you're a healthcare provider, basically everything, and then think about what could happen. Because this situation is a no-go, in my opinion. This should not happen. And if it happens, and I understand an organization that doesn't pay even in such a case, this is fine from, for me at least, it's okay. But you cannot, and this was one of the big, of many problems with this uh, healthcare provider, they didn't even think about informing someone and explaining what really happened. It just happened, and, of, and at some point in time, well, there are nude pictures of you online without any consent. 
this is a huge problem and most of you don't have such data, I would assume, although I saw some healthcare providers in the room before. Um, but think about, for instance, also all the MBOs, mentioned by objective forms, your quarterly talk. I mean, you write the quite personal information in there, how you're performing, what are you go doing good, what are you doing not so good, where should you improve? I mean, the whole thing is a trust relationship. You have to trust that only the few necessary people read it. What if the whole public reads what you're bad at in your job? Does it really help you to find a new job? Does it uh, make you feel good? I would say no. And then there are always the forgotten email conversations and nowadays all our Slack and uh, Microsoft Teams and whatever Google calls it nowadays, their chat platform. I mean, it's quite common that we talk and write with our peers inside the organization in a quite leger way. We make jokes which can be taken out of context and be quite harmful. We write personal stuff in there and there are a lot of people who write personal emails using their business account, which is even worse. Do you really want, if you're affected, that all your chat messages get publicized? Do you really want them, other people, to be able to look at what have you written? For instance, you're a journalist, you work for NZZ. Do you really think other journalists, journalists didn't download that data to look into what you're writing internally? I mean, come on. They knew a bit about the whole publication much quicker as most of the whole, of whole Switzerland. They were already downloading and analy analyzing that data for interesting pieces to write. So again, take another look at your data, take another look at your decisions with, from a new viewpoint. Make sure you really take into account what does it mean to your employees and so on. So as homework, I want to take, uh, give you the following tasks because I'm your boss now. As some conference. Uh, <laughs> so, have a really clear understanding of the reason for your organization's continued existence. In other words, the formal thing would be do bu business co uh, business continuity management. This would answer quite a, few, a lot of those questions. But if you don't have the time, don't have the resources, as most organizations, to do BCM, it would already help us to help you to know. Why should you exist? What's the important part of your business? What's your mission? What's your North Star? What's your tactics? And so on. This helps us prioritize. Make sure those are written down. And ideally, everyone somewhat agrees, aside from those people who are responsible for the business part that is not so highly prioritized, of course. You're, if you have a communications team, I mean, you should have templates by now. What will you publicize over which uh, channel to whom if you get hit by a ransomware, if data is stolen in your case, if your critical data is stolen and published. In any way, have at least decisions made that you, that you want to publicize and what do you want to publicize. You, you have to communicate. Most organizations of medium size and larger, they will have to inform at least their partners, at least their supply chain partners and employees. Think about today, what do you want to tell them? And what's your strategy? What's your company culture? I can gaze quite well from how prepared and what goals are written in the communication plan for an incident, how good, in quotes, is the company culture. An open company culture, a feedback-based company culture, a company culture where you care about each other will be quite well Written, have quite a well-written communication plan which focuses on informing, supporting, providing guidance. If it's just, sorry, it was an APT, we, can, we couldn't do anything about it, then I can imagine how your company culture is, or I would at least assume, and don't apply for a job at yours. Um, then really define someone, define a role during a crisis, during an incident, who is, who is responsible to make sure that the welfare of our employees is make care, uh, taken care of? Who is r walking around, looking at people and making sure that those who look tired go home and sleep? 
who is responsible to make sure that the, their glasses are always full with water, who makes sure that there is no Coke, no pizza, <laughs> because it's not very healthy uh, over multiple days, so maybe some apples, bananas, and so on, who, make, who, who en ensures that this happens, that those are bu uh, bought and uh, distributed. And take, please take a really, really good look, not from a legal standpoint, the legal side is easy, from, the, from your personal, moral, how your organization sees itself from your cultural point of view, what data do you have, what does it really mean if it is impacted by a cyber attack, what does it really mean, to whom, and what should you inform them about if it happens. It's not an easy task, it's, I mean, it's really on the level of asset management doing correctly, but it's possible and you uh, usually have a good idea what's the really critical stuff and there you can start. Of course, this is a sponsored talk. If you want to talk about this stuff, more stuff, anything about from red teaming over incident response and so on, we have a booth. I will be there the whole day. And from here on, I wish you a very nice conference and especially a good lunch. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gregor. Thank you. And uh, I hope you all take very good messages with it. We already have a question here in the... Uh, your last slide, yes, your last recommendation. Yeah. Um, normally, there is a clear responsibility for environmental health and security. Mm -hmm. Lying at the sea level. I agree, yes. <laughs> Thank you. I agree completely. And Don't send that person home. Let's hope it never happens, that <laughs> such pictures get out, but yes, yeah, absolutely. Uh, if I may summarize, I think the first issue was about if you have any sort of health inspection, mm -hmm. BCM manager for all kind of crisis situation, use these people, yeah. take them on board. Um, and the second of the issue was uh, it, uh, you can have so all sorts of data which will basically kill you from a moral and... <laughs> And legal. <laughs> legal standpoint <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> till the end of your days. <laughs> yeah. Do we Thank have other much. questions, please? Um, if not, I think time's early, already up. Early lunch. Uh, 